All right, so here's our next example. Another linear differential equation, right? We identified this one as being linear in the introduction. We want to see if we can solve it. So it's already in the right form. We identify our function, right? So our, our f of x in this case, f of x is going to be minus cosine x. Okay, so our integrating factor is e to the integral of minus cos x dx, which gives me e to the minus sine x. Okay, so we multiply both sides by, by the integrating factor and we see what we get. We have e to the minus sine x times y prime is equal to minus, oops, sorry, I don't want an equal sign there yet, minus cos x e to the minus sine x times y. Okay, there's the left-hand side, and that's going to be equal to cos x e to the minus sine x, right? We have to also multiply by the integrating factor on the right-hand side. Okay, so there's our integrating factor here, here, here. We put it in all three places. As usual, the whole point is that the left-hand side now collapses. All right, this is by design. e to the minus sine x times y. The derivative of that will be equal to cos x e to the minus sine x. Okay? So we integrate. We take the, uh, take the antiderivative on both sides, right? On this side, we simply get e to the minus sine sine x. Oops. Okay, times y. On the other side, we have to do this integral. Cos x e to the minus sine x dx. And of course, for that integral, you're going to want to let um, u equal to minus sine x. du will be minus cos x dx. Then it's just going to become the integral of e to the u, which is e to the u. So we get minus e to the u, which is minus sine x, possibly plus some constant. Okay, so now we have to solve for y. So we multiply both sides by e to the plus sine x, get rid of it on this side, and what we get is that y is equal to minus 1 plus c e to the sine x. Okay, and that's our solution. Um, by the way, um, if you're Curious, we have a bit of time. Remember that we also notice this is separable. So you might wonder, like, what happens if you treat it as a separable equation? Um, let's, let's find out. What if we separate? So if we, if we treat this as a separable equation, we have uh, dy dx is equal to cos x times 1 plus y. All right? So... 1 over 1 plus y dy is equal to cos x dx. All right. Integrate both sides. We get natural log of 1 plus y is equal to sine x plus some constant, maybe we'll call it, um, let's say, k. We do the usual thing, we exponentiate both sides, e to the k, we're going to write it as another constant, which accounts for the absolute value, accounts for the zero. 1 plus y is equal to c e to the sine x, and subtracting 1 from both sides, we get the same answer as before. Okay. All right, so again, we can, we can 
use our choice of methods. Both get us to the answer. Again, you can probably argue that the, the separable approach was easier, at least it's shorter, fewer steps involved. Um, but the point is, at some point, you're going to run into a linear equation that's not separable. And then you want to be able to have this method in your back pocket, right? Not everything is going to be separable. Sometimes you're going to need to use this method, and it'll be the only method that works.